Hi guys, my name is Perry Miller. I'm a student at Gravit High School and I am today's host for this meeting. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat and I will um, ask them after. But this is our speaker, Miss Molly Watkins, and she's going to talk to you guys today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for the introduction. I love the student host. This is amazing. Hi, everybody. I'm Molly Watkins. I hope you are having a great day. Uh, I am with Comprehensive Consulting Solutions for Small Businesses. And what we do is we help businesses with their small business puzzle. So what does that mean? So when you're thinking about it at your age, right, I was trying last night to kind of think about when I was y'all's age, thinking of, you know, what do I want to do, I, you know, when I get older and grow up? And this is kind of an analogy I want to give you. So what we do is we help people with their small business puzzle, small businesses. Think about y'all when you go to the grocery store, the movies, the pharmacy, the gas station, right? And you walk in there and you see customers. That's marketing. How did we get those folks there, right? So marketing is how we bring people in to the business. And then when you're at the grocery store and you're checking out and you see, you know, they're, they're scanning your stuff, you have the inventory, the, the products that you wanted, and they're checking you out. That's operation and processes. So, and then those people that are serving you are the actual team members or the staff. Right. So when you think about what we do here, at, you know, comprehensive consulting, think about businesses that you've interacted with, that you've went into, that you've visited, that you've purchased from. Right. And think about how everything works in that business. That's what we do. So we help those small businesses, all different types of businesses. So it could be contractors, roofers, movers, attorneys, process servers, you name it. But the one thing they all have in common is those core pieces of the business. So the business consulting, the operations, the uh, you know processes, the marketing, getting the customers there, all of these things work together for that business to run well. So that's a little bit about what we do. And then about me, um, as I said, I'm Molly Watkins. Uh, I am the founder here. I was with a Fortune 100 company where I was a sales leader. So I helped, you know, insurance agents grow, retain, profit those same pieces of that grocery store, right, to make them kind of exceed and excel at their goals. And when I left there, started this company to actually help more small businesses. So we, we have a team and we are able to help a variety of businesses, not only locally in Northwest Arkansas, but across the United States. So that's a little bit about us and a little bit about me. Um, I know that, you know, if I'm thinking like y'all, this would be a lot more fun if it was interactive. <laughs> so that's kind of my spiel. I would love to hear y'all's questions about, you know, what direction or what your thoughts are. There's so many avenues with small businesses and business in general, not just consulting, right? So there's sales, there's marketing, business development, recruiting, you name it. All of those pieces kind of go into the puzzle. So I'm going to turn it over to you, our great host. Thank you so much. Um, like I said, teachers, if you want to collect questions and put them in the chat, I can ask those questions. But actually, I have a question. Yes, what specific classes would you take as a high schooler if they are offered that would help pertain to this business? That is a great question. Mary. So I love that. So I would say I'm not as aware of what classes are offered in high school, right? So I just speaking of the classes that I seem deemed most important would be anything business, communication, finance, administration, organization, time management, anything that helps you, you know, kind of think about this is when we're in business, the couple of things that we have to do is we have to communicate, we have to lead, we have to understand how things work in a professional environment, right? So any of the classes that help you get prepared for that is what I would suggest. And when I was your age, the reason why when I went to college and I went and I decided to do marketing was my sister said, you like to talk to people. <laughs> so 
so. <laughs> and that's true. Uh, but it was kind of what got me interested in that whole realm of how do we make, you know, how do we help businesses grow? So that is a great question. Anything business? Um, I'm not, you know, Perry, what kind of classes are y'all offered these days? So actually, Ms. Moots here is a business teacher, but I am currently in survey of business where we are getting our Excel certifications and our Microsoft educate certifications. But I'm sure Ms. Moots would, could tell you about some of the what classes do you offer as a business teacher? So we do offer like marketing classes. Um, we offer accounting, um, at least here. And I think most schools kind of offer around the same thing, like an intro to business, Oh, that's great. Um, social media, yeah, social media. We do have professional communications, which is not necessarily a business class, but um, yeah, most schools, I think all schools really are offering some type of business um, program of study. So that is fantastic. Thank yeah. you. I mean, back when I went to high school, they did not have you know, programs like that in the high right. school. That is fantastic. Right. Yeah. So all of those classes, <laughs> that's yeah. what I would take. Yes, those yes. are fantastic. Take business classes. <laughs> yes, yeah, and accounting, right? So you understand finance. Those are all in social media marketing. Those are fantastic. Take them all. <laughs> so you find your um, marketing degree absolutely necessary in this job? I wouldn't say the marketing degree specifically. It's a great question. I would say, business just some of the back like y'all when you go to school you're not going to learn everything about your job right you're, you're getting the foundations you're getting ready for, to prepare for that position so it's the practice and the experience those are all foundational classes that will give you the basic knowledge to excel so any of those things those are fantastic i'm so excited y'all have that okay so out of all of the degrees that you could get what degree would you recommend the most? Well, and I would just say, if you're getting a degree, um, something in business administration. So nowadays they have a plethora of degrees, right? I mean, they have business administration, business research, marketing research. There's a, a ton these days. So any of those. And if you're not choosing that path to go to college, then there are other ways that you can get certifications online. Google, social media platforms, marketing certificates. It's a very different world than it used to be. So with some of those roles, make sure though that you take, this is my recommendation, college level communication and college level finance. If you don't you know, decide to take the degree path, at least take some of those core classes. Those will go a long way for you in your business career. So great questions, thank you. Thank you. Um, so what kind of software or do you have like a planner that you use to stay organized? Like, how do you keep up with all of these like projects per se? Yeah, that is a great question. So yes, absolutely. So technology is a key important, very important piece of how we do business. So to keep organized, we personally use a tool called ClickUp. It is a project management software where every task with every client we know exactly what we have to do over the next week, six weeks, 12 weeks. Also, for me, I have a calendar, electronic calendar. Everything goes there, right? So if I have a meeting, also one thing for y'all to think about is time blocking. And when you're putting together your schedule, you're thinking about, you know, I'm going to do this during this time. And sorry, one second. We're going to do this during this time. Because time blocking and organization go hand in hand. One thing is for me, if I don't put it as a priority and write it down, it's easy to go, oh, I'll do that next week, right? And so time blocking, making sure that I have priorities on my calendar, as well as using the project management tool to make sure that not only I, myself, but also our team is achieving all the deadlines and goals that we have associated with each account. So calendar. I love to-do lists. <laughs> I'm, you know, I love all of that stuff. You don't have to do all of those things, but pick one that you're comfortable with. And that time blocking is a great tool for y'all, you know, going into college because, you know, papers and writing stuff. And, you know, if you have it on the calendar, if we put it in writing, we are more likely to act. So just keep that in mind. 
Thank you. I love my planner too. So yes, that's awesome. We actually have a question. What advice or tips do you have for someone who would, who's wanting to start their own business? That is a great question. So the first thing would be to do a lot of research. So with any business, sometimes we go in and we say, hey, this is a great idea and we run with it, right? Sometimes though we, you know, every time we need to slow down and put a plan together. What is our business, right? What are we, you know, what is our aspiration? What are we trying to, you know, in the future sell? Is it a product? Is it a service? Who are, our, you know, who are our competitors? Who's out there already? Is there a market for the product? Is the industry saturated? And it's okay not to know the answers to these questions. You learn it as the process. There are also a lot of, there are a ton of free resources in Northwest Arkansas. Of course, we are a consultant and we do a lot of, you know, activities like this volunteer work in the community, but there are also free resources in the community, whereas we charge for our services. But there's Startup junk, Junkie, there's ASDBC, there's several organizations that are focused specifically on entrepreneurs. There's also a program that I've, I volunteer with called e for all which is Entrepreneur for All. And that's another program that helps candidates go through the full process of starting and owning a business. So the first step, if you're like, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur, that is fantastic. It is an awesome world. But let's get a plan together. Let's make sure we understand what we're getting into and we know the direction that we want to go. Because if we don't have a plan, we're just guessing, right? And we don't have all the answers. <laughs> so don't think you will because you won't. You won't. It's a learning process. So great question, whoever brought that up. Okay, thank you so much. Um, what area of business would you recommend right, right now? Like what's hot? Like I have a question about a food truck business. Like, is that better? Or like, tell us what area is hot? What area you would recommend getting into right now? I love it. So uh, y'all are going to love this. So where's hot? <sighs> Here's our thing with all of the social platforms is TikTok is the number one search platform right now. Not Google, right? It's TikTok. Social media, if you had to, you know, get on there and try to figure out like, how do I communicate with customers and um, Perry, I may be going on a tangent here, so direct me back if I get off the question, okay? <laughs> um, but TikTok and the social media tools, y'all, your generation, make sure that you are focusing and understanding those platforms. In today's world, people use them not only to search, but to communicate, to get information right. Those are where we want to make sure that we have some experience because as a marketer, I hire people to write content. I hire people to do social. I hire people to do a lot of those things in the social media world. So trending right now, TikTok all the way. There's also another site that was hit for um, one of the top trending and that's Be Real. That is the opposite of Instagram, right? So there are a lot of really cool trends with social media. In terms of marketing, this is funny. If you would have asked me this 10 years ago, it would have been a much different answer than it is today. Our world is technology. Algorithms make our life, right? So when y'all get online, when you do this, when y'all do this, everything in the back end of technology, it's algorithm, it's robots, right? And so part of what we do as marketers is we develop content and strategy to work with those robots online. So have a great understanding of everything social, of online marketing, how it works, because y'all today in our world, if you're not on Google, Google search between its affiliate marketing, its search and dynamic advertising reaches almost 92% of internet users. That's crazy, right? That is crazy. So make sure that you understand how to find things on search how to market yourself. And that may just be getting engagement, right? Influencer culture is a thing. 
and people share information. Now, not always accurate information. <laughs> I just want y'all to keep that in mind, please. So whenever you have a great influencer, go check it out with some research, right? So, uh, because not everything is as it seems. Remember robots online. So for trending, I would say anything online marketing, make sure that you are aware. Robots, algorithms, AI in the background, design, web, all trending right now because these are, you know, just amazing brains that I work the front end of that technology, right? But they work the back end to make everything work together. So trending online and in terms of businesses and appearing, you had said like food truck or this, or, you know, I would say you'd have to do that research period before you made a decision of what business to go with. Look at the saturation. Where do you want to put it? right? Where is it going to go? How many cars go by there every day? What are you going to sell? What sets you apart? And big one for business owners, what's your competitive advantage? What makes you better as a food truck, right? Or whatever business. And that's not always price, right? That could also be quality. There are a lot of things. And then one other thing when you're thinking about your business fairy is think about okay, this is a, you know, a great idea, but do people want it? <laughs> and a food truck, of course, but sometimes business owners, they, they may not be a market for it, right? So always make sure there's a market for it. Do your due diligence before you make a decision. And usually you'll see the data and sometimes we got to take a risk, right? If we can get the capital to make sure the business runs, that's a big part many reasons why businesses fail is because they don't have the capital to sustain the business. So most of the times when we're starting a business, if we don't have that internal capital or we don't use resources such as grants, um, there are a lot around in this community. There's seed startup funds that a lot of the different organizations here offer. And there's also loans and family, right? And friends. So capital is a big part of owning that business. So Perry, that was a great question. I hope that answers it. I know I got on a tangent there. <laughs> so. That was amazing. I actually am a small business owner myself. I've had my own um, company since 2020. Congrats. Thank you. But back to like talent versus grit and being able to run your own business. What would you do on being like a business person if you aren't necessarily like that's your talent is being a business person, but you have like the skill for the trade, but you're not necessarily good at like the financial parts. Oh, yeah, no, that's called a CPA, Perry. It's a great question. <laughs> we don't have to be good at everything. Most of my clients are not like me, y'all. They're not, you know, time blocking, right? And all these other things. That's not real life. That's me. For my clients, many of them are kind of, I know my trade. For example, I work with one of our best clients as a mover. He knows his trade, right? He knows how to move. He's very efficient, very effective with his moving process. But the business side, how to market, right? He had no idea. And that's where we come in, right? To sit down and to say, okay, we can help with the business planning and the structure, the marketing, the staffing for accounting, which no debits and credits are not my thing, y'all. <laughs> if we want to look at financial statements, that's fabulous in terms of a profit and loss, a balance sheet, right? We're in, but debits and credits with accounting and bookkeeping, fantastic, but it's not my area of strength. So what we do is we find other professionals to help us with those areas. And there's many great ones in this community. So we hire attorney, right? If we're, we're developing a partnership and we need to write up a legal agreement, partnerships, we always want legal agreements. And then we're going to have a CPA that helps us with our taxes, right? We have a bookkeeper that helps us with our bookkeeping. So don't feel like you have to be the jack of all trades. You know your trade well, and then you can hire or learn additional resources in those areas that you may not be you know, it's, the, the strength may not be there. Does that make sense, Perry? Yes, that was great. That was a great explanation. Thank you. Okay. I have a couple questions on, that I just feel like the, everybody would like to know. Yeah. Um, what characteristics 
should a person have if they're going to pursue their, your career? Like, do they need to be a people person? Do they need to be organized? Like, what is your main characteristic that you feel like makes this job right for you? It's a great question. So I would, it's hard for me to say specific skills because even though myself, I may be, I'm an ambivert at sometimes I'm extroverted and sometimes I'm introverted. Um, I, some of my best content writers are the complete opposite of me. <laughs> so I would not say it depends on, you know, what you want to do and it, what, here's one thing is the two biggest things for business owners that I have seen that are the most successful is not intelligence. No, it is not even a lot of people will say emotional intelligence you know, intelligence is our brain power, emotional intelligence is observation, reading of others, engaging in a conversation, empathy, right? And like those, neither one, really what has made the best business owners is yes, they have a little bit of intelligence, of course, they have a little emotional intelligence, but the two biggest drivers are not, a, well, I guess they are a skill. You had mentioned grit. It would be execution and attitude. Those are our two biggest things to thrive in a business. It's not anything else. If you put your mind to it, one of my favorite quotes, y'all, this is a fabulous quote, Henry Ford, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. Favorite quote. That is absolutely, if you have the perspective that you can't parry, you won't. If you have the perspective that you will and you work on the right activities to get there, we may, you know, hey, I want to start a business and congrats on your business. Maybe you don't know the ways to get there, but you know activity. I got to talk to people. I've got to reach out here. It's all about execution, y'all. It's all about attitude. Thank you, Can. Another favorite quote, this is by Theodore Roosevelt, is whining without a resolution is called, I'm sorry, complaining without a resolution is called whining. <laughs> it's true, right? Sometimes our head gets in our way of us achieving fantastic goals. I wouldn't say there's this magic formula period. We got to have this, this, and this, and this. So we've got to have the right attitude and we've got to be dedicated to put in the work to get the end result. And one thing I want y'all to keep in mind is where I am today, I didn't go to school and, you know, just become overnight. I worked in corporate America. I worked with small business owners. I was educated. I have insurance license, securities license, you know, all these different things over my career to keep educated. Learning never stops, right? So always think you can and know there's no magic puzzle, right? It's not, I'm organized, I'm time blocked. You know, there's things that for each person are individualized, Perry, that makes them the successful business owner. So if you've got this great plan, execute that is huge and we all have bad days y'all hey i'm having a bad day i can't do that today oh wow that's a big project how am i going to get that done right you can do it make sure you focus on the activity that is what many of us miss and sometimes i think that my experience with some of people in the younger generation is they expect it to be right now because y'all grew up in the age of social media. Y'all, I'm pre-Google. We had to go to a library, right? Like when we had to get information, like we didn't go to Google. We had to go to the library, get a book, you know? And when Google came out, y'all, I was just blowing up my papers because Google and my professor's like, Molly, you can chill. I'm like, no, Google. <laughs> you can find everything, right? So the one thing I want y'all to keep in mind is don't expect to just, hey, I graduated and boom, I'm this overnight success, right? This takes work. It takes work. It takes execution and attitude. Always know that we will earn it if we put in the right activities and have that right attitude. So I know that was a very convoluted way to answer that period, but there's no specific answer, if that makes sense. I've, I understand. Like, it takes a lot. So as far as just like starting, would you recommend like a small, like get it going in slowly or would you recommend like big jump, like just do it? I think that would be, that's a great question. And I would look at, we've done our research, right? 
we have our capital to make sure we can sustain the business, right? Those are the kind of questions. Now, if we don't have capital and we're trying to open up a restaurant, that's that's not going to work, right? Because there's a lot of overhead costs associated with a the restaurant. There is a lot of upfront capital with restaurants, with machines. You would set a food truck. We have to get the food truck. We have to have the specific cooking, you know, whatever that is installed in the food truck, right? We have to price our products. <laughs> there are a lot of things to do. Some of us can just jump in, Barry. Some of us have that mindset. They thrive on it, right? Others, then not so much. My advice is to make that plan and to make sure, hey, this is, but one thing to keep in mind, it's a risk. So your normal natural brain is going, whoa, this is not a nine to five job, right? There is no salary guaranteed for me. I have to go earn it every day and I have to do those activities to help my staff and everyone achieve our goals, right? So again, one of those, it just depends on the business, but sometimes girl, we just got to take it and we got to go with it, but make sure we've done our planning and activity, right? And attitude. So as far as like advice about what, about the people who are nervous, what advice would you give to them to make them like, to just ease the nerves? That's a great question. So I would say yoga. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, have a way to, uh, stress relief is very important. So if that's yoga, the gym, weights, cheerleading, basketball, football, whatever that may be right for extracurricular activities, make sure that we are releasing that stress, right? Is the number one. And that's a personal decision here. I don't, you don't want to pressure someone either way. Sometimes you're not ready. You're not, I was, you know, when I decided to start my business, I had just got out of corporate America, you know, making, you know, great money, right? And I wanted to go start a business, right? So a little bit of starting a business is I was poor for a little bit. <laughs> That's what, you know, I'm putting it into the business, right? I had saved. So that could have been different, different if I would have got a lot of capital, right? So it depends on the situation, capital or plan. In terms of like the risk, that's a hard one. And I can't speak for everybody because my perception is very different than others. Perception is reality. And a personality like myself, if I'm not ready for something, it's going to overwhelm me. For other types of my clients, that's not the same, right? They work better with a simple plan and go get it. So that is going to be one of those internal things where you, friends, family, great you know, instructors and teachers, these programs are amazing. Y'all take advantage of that. They didn't have that stuff when, you know, back in the day, pre-Google. <laughs> so, great question though. Amazing. So in your opinion, what makes a business stand out? Like you're like, someone comes to you with an idea and you're like, this is going to work. Like what makes it stand out above all else? Passion. Yeah, passion and execution. And sometimes their ideas aren't extraordinary, right? It's a product or a service. It's innovation is when we bring something new, just because we make it, you know, better sometimes really is an innovation. But how they stand out is they put in the, the work to make the thing happen, but they also are open to know that they don't know everything right? And they bring in resources, like you had mentioned, the strengths earlier, right? And the weaknesses, they bring in people to help them with those areas of the puzzle that they're not as good with, right? So, and I'm sorry, repeat the question, because I'm missing something on that one I wanted to say. I'm sorry. What makes a business stand out? Okay, so in that, thank you, ma'am. And that would be also the competitive advantage, so I mentioned that earlier. So when you're thinking about your business and it may not be this brand new innovation, you know, cell phones, think about this. I don't know if any of your, anyone around y'all had flip phone. That was way back in the day, right? We had flip phones. We thought we were cool. We had pagers, right? <laughs> Evolution changes, right? And so <clears throat> I think with everything that changes in our life, trying to keep up with things, it's really one of those, it could be a personal question too, Barry. And I think with, and say it one more time, I'm sorry. You're good. 
So the business, what makes it stand out? When someone comes to you for an idea, they're yeah, like the competitive advantage. I'm trying to articulate this in a way to make sure. So competitive advantages, why we stand out. So let's think about this. If you go to Walmart, what are you expecting? Cheap, right? Cost effective goods. If you go to um, JC Penney's, Macy's, Dillard's, different expectation, right? Quality a status symbol, not as much worried about the cheaper shirt, right? Some people pay way too much for clothes, y'all. I'm not saying do that. <laughs> I'm just saying what makes us different? What are we known for? And so with us, we are known for our competitive advantage. What makes us special? Is there are many consultants in the area, y'all? But what makes us special is, number one, we are passionate and we care about what we do with small businesses. I get gratification when we hit our goals, when we blow up numbers and we, that's when I get excited, right? But our true competitive advantage is we don't just talk about strategy and most consultants say, hey, let's grow 20%. That's great. How are we going to grow that? There's many things that grow into that growth, right? We're going to do a combination of you know, community involvement, online networking, social media ads, blah, blah, blah. We deep dive into those tactics. So our competitive advantage is the way we stand out from others. We can not only let's talk about big picture, but let's talk about those little things that get us to that goal, right? So competitive advantage and no matter what we do is why we are better. What makes us stand out? What are brands known for? That's what competitive advantage is. Why are we better? And that, that doesn't always, like I said, mean price. Not Price is not always most important to everyone. Sometimes we put our own perception onto business decisions and marketing messages. It's cognitive bias, right? There's implicit and explicit. There's a lot of things that go on with our mind when we're making decisions, right? So your competitive advantage to you may be different. So make sure when you're thinking like, hey, I think this is it, talk to others, right? Trusted professionals, family, friends, people that you know that will, number one, tell you the truth and be honest with you about those decisions, right? But also help you develop that. It doesn't have to be all you alone, right? Competitive advantage is huge. It's why brands stand out. It's why you remember brands. So great question. And sorry, I had you repeat that, but I wanted to make sure I hit that answer. <laughs> you did a very good job answering it too. Thank you, ma'am. So for each person that comes to you, is it more like a step louder? Like, do you have um, steps? You're like, first we do this to help them and second, or is it individual per person that comes to you? Like what would great. be your first step? That's a great question. So usually we are building because the businesses we work from are startup, which could be $0 revenue. Revenue is the amount of money they bring in, okay? That's before their expenses, so it's not profit, okay? So when we're looking at, you know, revenue and these sort of things as they go through, let me say it one more time, I'm sorry. Sometimes I like to hear it a couple of times before I give my answer, right? No, you're good. Okay, so what would be the first step when someone comes to you? Or is it individual per person? Is it like a ladder or? Yeah, it's individual, but we do start. So like our startups are not in a position to be able to afford everything they want to do, right? They're just starting their business. Cash flow is what we're working on. Some of our larger businesses, yes, we go in and do multiple steps at once. So for example, um, we get reached out to and we, we set up a free consultation. That's what we do here. I handle those and I meet with the client, determine what our opportunities are, do some research and we develop priorities because even though we, hey, we may need to do these 50 things, right? Time or capacity, meaning money, uh, I'm sorry, money or capacity is going to be our differentiating factor because we may not be able to afford everything we need to do right away, Right. So low-lying fruit is what I call it. And that's a great question. Let's start with our basic things that we're not doing right. Remember that Google statistic that I had said, if we know 92% of folks are online, where should we be? Online, right? So 
The big thing is, is we want to make sure they have that presence established online. And depending on the business, they're all different. Their marketing mix could be very different. So they may have different pieces that we're doing as part of their overall marketing, but we start right with that low lying fruit. So they're all different, but there's always, in my experience, opportunities and low lying fruit that every business owner has that we can start and then it just blows up from there. It's a great question though. So does your company, do you guys help small businesses with like finance and like getting a loan? Is that something you guys do for them? That's a good question. So we, we're we not a, a loan officer, right? Or a business broker or any of that. So what we do is we bring people together. So yes, we understand financial statements. We understand the analysis of how that works, but we are not a lender. So remember that professional thing that I mentioned earlier, we partner up, right? We, we don't get money from them. We just know they're good people. We've used them in the past, right? And we refer to them. So it's, it's you know, we kind of work together on a lot of these things. We're not going to remember, like we talked about, we're not going to know all this stuff. So we bring in those professionals. It's a great question. Thank you. Um, what are some ways that we could advance in your career field, like as a consultant? And what would your job help us do, like as far as in other career professions? Mm. Great question. So, okay, so say that to me one more time. I'm sorry, I'm going to make sure I've got you. No, you're good. Um, list some ways to advance in your career field. Um, how would this allow you to swap into other fields or roles easily? That is a fantastic question. Did you develop these questions, Barry? This class is amazing. Y'all are just on it. Look how to think about them. Y'all go, right? Love it. So, oh, advanced career field. That's going to be, I mean, like I said earlier, with the opportunity online, y'all can go and get Google certificates, online training. A lot of this stuff is free, y'all. It's all online. So I would say to advance in the career field, if you are, Hey, I want to like this stuff when I go in the grocery store, even at your school as a business, right? I think this is cool. I want to understand more of how this works. I want to understand how to get, you know, brands out there when you watch commercials or you see social media and you're excited, right? You're like, that's cool. Go learn about it. There are so many, your classes in school, take all of those, right? And then in college, start looking at whatever interests you. One thing about work, if you love it, it's not work, right? So find something you're passionate about that you love and then decide on the career field. So let's say you really enjoy, like, this is cool. I love to see people buy things and how do they get them there? All right. So I would start with some basic marketing classes. There's the five P's of marketing, the seven P's. There's all these different things. <clears throat> Sorry. And one thing that they love to do in marketing is so fancy words. <laughs> they love those words. I don't know why y'all. I did a presentation for the Fayetteville Public Library and had to literally pull out a book from college <laughs> to get some of the basic definitions because they weren't there, right? It's an online world. So advancing in your career is much different than it used to be. Online, there are free resources all over the place. There are classes, 15, 20 bucks to see like, do I want to be a marketer, right? For business and the business planning, that part's a little different. That is interacting with other business owners, right? Starting the business, networking in the community is a big one. There's a lot of groups around here. So advancing in your career, I would say start with the foundational concepts. And don't worry if it doesn't make total sense because it won't. It didn't make total sense for me and for many, many, many years later, <laughs> but it comes together, right? Perceptions, reality, and everything in our lives help us see things a certain way, right? So always be trying to evolve and add learning that expands your perception. It's a great question. Here. Amazing. So you mentioned the five P's of marketing. What are those? Do you have those? Yeah, of course, you're going to put me on the spot, Barry. Look at that. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to have to go old school, right? I love that. So think of it as it's product place promotion, 
are the main three. And those kind of break out into five or seven. So when you think about the five P's of marketing, it's kind of the things that we touched on. How do we get people there? How do we distribute our product? What is our product? Right? <laughs> are there logistics with our product? Where do we sell our product? right? Those, again, there's a lot of terms. That's a great question, though. Thank you for putting me on the spot on that one. So there's also some great information, y'all, we have on our blog. We've done some training with the Fayetteville Library that we have actual presentations and recordings on our website. So go and check out some of those blog articles. One of our marketing presentation is where I deep dive into the five Ps, right? And we went serious with examples. So please go check that out. Just go to, I know our website is the longest business name ever. <laughs> um, but if you go to our website and then you go to our blog, there is a ton of articles, y'all. We don't, we write to help small businesses that may not be able to work with us, right? But they want information. So check out the blog. But that was a great question. And thank you for keeping me on my toes, Perry. That was good, girl. See, of course, you of course. Remember all the definitions, right? <laughs> I know the concepts, right? I know how do we do it. And that's what matters. The terms, as long as we know how to do it, right? So great, great questions. Thank you. Okay, so when you are looking to hire people, I don't know if you do the hiring or just like personality traits that are often looked at when hiring people. What is like the personality trait that people are looking for? That's a great question. That's going to vary by business. For us, I mean, I'm not looking for anything particular because I know my perception is much different, right? I actually hire people that are different than me. And some are similar, right? But most are different because as a team, we all have different strengths. We work better together, right? We can bring more for the client because of each one of our strengths. So for traits, I do look for a couple things. So I actually, you know, we have writers that are in high school all the way up to college and all the way up to 60 years old, right? So we have all kinds of different people that work for us. And I would say, there are a couple things I look for. It has nothing to do with what you may think though, is are they creative, right? Can they look at a blank piece of paper? I have two types of writers. I have a research writer who, hey, here's a topic. They go research it, right? And they write a bunch on it. Then I have a creative writer. They have a blank canvas. There is nothing. And then they write, right? Two different kind of brains. So I can't say there's, I look for this or this. I look for creatives. I look for people that share, you know, that are different, but share similar values. You get what you give, right? Volunteering, all these things, we get what we give to the universe. And that's why I do these things, right? There's so many things in, in terms of like, you know, moving puzzles, but I do look at creative. I also look at, are they doers? And this goes back to ex ex execution. I don't want people that I have to micromanage. Um, we hire folks that are talented and we give projects and then they go get it done, right? So I try to, in the interview process, I give them an assignment. I wanna see if they execute. And here's the other thing, I am detailed. I am not looking, we're human for perfection, right? I'm going to catch those errors. I'm going to edit it, right? I'm going to be the editor there. So I'm not expecting perfection. I'm expecting them to use their amazing creator brain, right? Whip up some great, fantastic content that makes people want to buy. So there's, I mean, it's creative, it's executing and attitude. I mean, I know you're looking for like a specific answer, Barry, but there's, it's just, no, that was a really good answer. So what I got out of that is you're looking for diversity in a business and hard workers that you don't have to micromanage. There you go, girl. Summed it up perfectly. Yes, ma'am. That's perfect. Awesome. So um, what specific math, communication, or writing skills do you use the most in your profession? Okay, that's a great question. So mass communication, we use a ton of different tools here, right? You know, software and technology, of course, I remember I said pre-Google. So we are all about making things easier with technology. <laughs> so for communication, this is a big one. And this is what I see many people and that I interact with business owners struggle with is communication. There are, and that's why I said that business, you know, taking that college level, even if you just take the class. Um, because communication 
how that perception again, our experience shape how we communicate. And in a business setting, there are expectations. Are they right? I don't know. I can't answer that question, right? But there's expectations on how we communicate, how we interact with each other. And those are different for each other. Standards. There's a great book, y'all. It's called The Art of Conscious Conversations. And it talks about standards. And our standards are different across each one of us, right? So what you think acceptable and what I think acceptable is subjective or different. So sometimes with business communication, our standards are different and we don't communicate in the best way to where we understand it. Active listening is where we actually understand. We're not just listening to respond. That's what most people do. They listen to respond. They don't actually listen to understand, right? So with communication, let's make sure that we're listening. We're asking questions. We're having people repeat it. Some of the things that we've done today, right? In terms of how do we make sure there's an understanding and we understand what they're asking of us? Mass communication, we do a ton of daily calls, email, right? Meetings, That's I love that part. But we also use a tool called Constant Contact um, that we do a newsletter. So we have a quarterly newsletter that goes out to small businesses where we talk about you know, what's hot and happening, right? Do we, here's what's going on with us. Here's a cool blog. Here's this to keep engaged with our clients. Because one thing is it is harder to get a new client than it is to retain a client, right? So we want to make sure that those folks that we already have, our brand is in front of them. So it's not just a mass communication scale, right? With that also, there's automated workflow. So birthdays, anniversary emails are going and being sent out on the back end, right? There's other things with our ClickUp software that I use for onboarding to make sure that our onboarding is automated, right? Because technology and these bots we talked about earlier are a real thing. So let's make sure that we use not only in our communication, you know, we got to talk to our clients, but mass communication is we that quarterly. Keep in mind is how you communicate and how your customer communicate perceptions reality right so just keep those things in mind and just communication I think the biggest thing is if I had any advice for y'all is actively listen show empathy acknowledge that you're listening confirm ask questions and clarify never be afraid to ask questions because we can't learn and if someone doesn't you know, understand or is mad at you for asking a question that may not be the person that you want to be around. <laughs> okay. So just some advice there. But great question, Perry. Thank you so much. Okay. So as far as like actively listening, can you talk about some things that, that as a teenager you took for granted and you didn't think was important, but now as an adult, you realize that, that those could have helped you a lot. Oh gosh, yes, Perry. There are so many. How much time we got, girl? No, I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think we have about I mean, five minutes, mean, actually. I mean, okay, so you want to know about things? Wow, it's a great question. I love where you're at. So you want to know if things that I would have known when I was a teen. Wow, like I said, what time is it right now? I'm just kidding. Um, I would say. I know as much as we don't want to think they are, the adults really know what they're talking about. <laughs> just saying, y'all, I'm just saying. You know, they say, you'll, you know, when you get older, they were not kidding. Time flies, y'all. Make sure you relish every moment. Take advantage of every moment in your life because you literally you go from, you know, y'all's age and then you're me and you're like, where did the time go? right? So that would be one big thing is y'all, they're right. I hate it. I know we don't want to hear that, but it's true <laughs> on most of the things. And also I would say is my journey as an adult, I, these things we talked about with perception, cognitive, dis, or, sorry, uh, co the things that our brain works, our perception, the biases, right? The cognitive bias, all those things I had married much when I was young right? I didn't know enough. I thought I knew everything. I didn't know anything. <laughs> and I still, right? I'm still learning. I know more. Uh, I know my stuff, right? But there is no way I know everything. And I never will because I'm going to constantly learn, right? I'm always going to get better. And so teenage self, 
what else would I have said? That's such a great question. So I would say, you know, the, the, they know what they're talking about, the perception and the act of listening. Sometimes as when we're younger, you know, we feel like we got a little bit more to prove, right? Because we're young and everybody's older. And so we want to feel like we're right. Sometimes though, what we should be doing is just listening because you will gain so much insight and learning and perspective. And the way I learn y'all, and I knew this when I was young, is I learned from what other people do wrong. I learned from great too, but I really learn when they are doing something that I don't agree with. Rather, that could be ethically. It may not be you know, illegal, right? It's just ethical or it's the way they handle things. That's just how it works, right? So I think that is such a great question, but those would be the things. Make sure that you listen and, and just the world around you is fantastic. Explore, go look at these classes, right? The one other thing though is be young and have fun as well, right? We got to work hard, but we also got to play hard, okay? So that is some good advice, I think, with me. I got so, I love, y'all, I love Google. <laughs> so in college, I was like, let me write a paper. You know, it was just crazy. It was new, right? I was so excited. And I just, you know, just worked to death, right, on school. And sometimes maybe I should have, you know, had a little bit of a life, right? No, I'm not saying that still get your good grades and still achieve things, but also balance was one thing I was never good at and something that I struggle with y'all to this day. So these are lifelong things. We can always get better. We can't expect perfection, right? But the, those are the things I would think, no, girl, I would have to think about it because I know I would have a list <laughs> if I had more time to think about it. But those are the couple things, right? That said, oh, one more thing, I'm sorry, read. Read as much as possible. Read, read, read. Fiction and nonfiction it gives you, in my creative role, I love nonfiction because that's, you know, business. I love articles. But here's the thing also is as a creator, fiction helps my brain go places that it wouldn't go, right? So please read. Always be developing yourself, y'all. You've got the road ahead of y'all. It's such an exciting journey, too. So great question here. Thank you so much. I loved how you answered that question. Oh, thank but unfortunately, you. we do only have a couple minutes left. So yes, if you would man. like to make your final remarks and just thank everyone for being here. Thank you yeah, for absolutely. being here. Yes, and I noticed there was some chat. I I'm, I'm, assumed you got those, right? Just want to make sure. Okay, perfect. So yes, thank y'all so much for having me. I was so excited and nervous about this. So I appreciate the opportunity to sat with such just amazing minds, right? And y'all's career journey and where y'all want to go with your life. And just, just this one thing too, is don't compare yourself. I'm sorry. That was the one other thing, the teenage years are coming to me now. Don't compare yourself where I'm at and what I achieved is in my perception, right? When you're looking at yourself, always look at, did I did do better than I did yesterday? That don't compare ourselves. There's a lot of Instagram and culture, right? Where we compare ourselves online. Don't get stuck in that. We got this. We do better. We focus on our activities, right? And we make it happen. Attitude. And thank y'all so much. I'm, I hope that y'all have the greatest journey and take all the business classes. And it, you know, it seems like y'all's teachers and instructors are amazing. So please lean on them. This is such a great program. And thank y'all for having me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Teachers and students, you can you can leave now if you must if you must. Thank y'all. Have a good day, guys.